I think everyone in here is crying. I think every single adult in here is crying. You're so beautiful, and thank you for sharing that. We really appreciate it. I'm going to cry, too. <laughs> if some kids don't see themselves ever, they will never speak up. They will never want to be leaders. They will not believe in their own ability to succeed. And to think about the consequences that a lack of diversity has in our schools was really important to me and pushed me to do something beyond just my own experience. So I decided that I was going to collect 1,000 books where Black Rose was the main character, and I wanted to donate them to the school that my mom had attended in Retreat St. Mary. Um, and we were able to do that over November of 2015 to February of 2016, um, and we've just continued since. There are so many kids out there that do not see themselves sadly, and there are so many stories that need to be told, and 1,000 Black Girl Books really comes out of this need to create mirrors and windows so that young black girls can see themselves as these leaders and people who are not black girls understand and respect the identities of who we are, especially in such a big and sometimes often scary world where if we don't educate ourselves and read, what do we have? What understandings do we have? Are we kind enough? Um, we think that books, and I believe the books, give us the tools and resources to do better for ourselves uh, and to do better for each other. Do you have a question? Perfect. Well, it's not, it's not necessarily a question, but I want to, ex I want to tell you how how books actually impacted me during a hard time. Um, about two or three years ago, my mother had a heart attack and two strokes, and I ended up breaking down, and I was actually a lot chubbier than this. I would basically be the heaviest person in my cl class, and when I found out that my mo mother would have maybe died two years ago, so I broke down and I lost all the weight. Then my teacher introduced me to this, to this book of a little girl just like me that was more experienced to the Bible and it really impacted me. Now my mother is out and about, but she's using a wheelchair right now, but I just, I'm just thankful to God that she is alive. impacted by books because when I'm reading them, it feels like I'm just in the book. I just read and read and read. It's just so fun. We love to hear that. And there are more books coming your way, of course. Uh, and through our donation that we, we gave to, as, a, as the Read Across America ambassador, we want to make sure that every kid has books all the time in Jamaica because you all deserve to be in your stories, seeing yourself, and loving to read. You say your name and your age. My name is Imani, and I am eight years old. Uh, so my question is, how did you get the motivation to start a thousand black girls book? So, uh, that's a great question. Great question, Imani. So the the motivation for one thousand black girl books really it comes from me knowing that you know other kids don't have the same privileges that I do. You know that I saw this issue right where I didn't see myself in these books. And I knew that I could tell my parents to go to the bookstore and buy me books where black girls were the main character, that they would have no problem doing that. But then you have to think about kids that can't afford to go to the bookstore, whose parents don't buy them books in their house, who don't have access to libraries, who don't get these resources. And to think that there wasn't kids, they this is so, I can't do this that kids don't have access to those resources was really hard to think about. You know, imagine if a kid couldn't, they couldn't see themselves, and they couldn't feel that feeling of being inside of a book, that they had never felt that way, that they hated to read. It was really hard to deal with that feeling and to know that I had the power to do something about it. I had the voice, I wanted to make change, and to think about the kids that wouldn't have access to those resources, it really felt like I would be hurting them if I didn't speak up about it because I knew I had that motivation and that drive. And the thing that keeps me going is other kids that start campaigns, that wanna collect books, that love to read, that perform poetry, that ask hard questions. So that's one of the parts of my motivation, and you guys are a huge part of my motivation. I don't cry when I meet other students. I really don't. I literally have never cried at a student event before, and I don't know what's going on. Um, but you all mean so much to me. and to think that anything I do impacts not only my town, but this whole world in this, in this country, it means a lot to me, and that will always keep me going.
If I was not prepared by Margaret Taylor, Monica Dennis, and my family to hear Marley on that day, then her voice would fall on mute ears. We must listen to our young people. We must listen to the words they say and the spaces in between. We must understand that their voice is not our voice that their way of seeing the world matters, that their understandings of this moment matters. For adults, none of us are picnic in, in 2022, no. I was a picnic in the 70s and 80s. Their understanding of this moment, we need better access to. And that can only happen if we listen to their voices. We are largely people of African descent, and people have kept words from us. They have kept, forcefully, kept us from learning how to read, because it is the place where we really can experience the highest form of freedom, our minds and our imagination. I told some kids the other day that we live in people's imagination. The clothes you have on, the shoes you have on, the cars that you drive, people had to imagine it, you know. Yeah. And that they created industries based on their imagination. We can imagine freedom. We can imagine new societies. And these books will help us do that. They are not simply for the replication of capital. They offer something greater than capital. Your own liberty and the liberty of the nation. So I want to thank you, Marley. You continue to be the gift. I sometimes joke that I got not paying no attention to me from 1972 to 1980. And so he decided that he was going to come back extra and give me this child. But the gift that she gives me is because I work each day to try to actually hear her.